from the car. This is my husband's brand new car. It's a Tesla, because he's fancy like that. I am like halfway through the book of Edda. This is a reread. I don't love it as much as I did the first time, not that it's my favorite of the first two, but I should have it finished by the time we get into Sioux Falls, and then I can start the third book, which is Book of Flora, and then I can start my review, because I love these books. I'm so excited. All right, uh, say hello, Christopher. Hello, Christopher. <laughs> he's, he's silly like that. We have like this really cool uh, window where you can see the clouds and the sun and stuff. And this is South Dakota, which really isn't that interesting at the moment. See you all in the next clip. Here we are, still in this car. Uh, we just got out of Oakoma, South Dakota, I think is how you say it. Started in Williams, Montana. We are stopping for the night in Sioux Falls before going to Minnesota to see some family. I am like almost, I still have like a quarter of this book left. I don't know that I'm gonna finish it tonight. Uh, it is currently 9.07 p.m. in South Dakota, and I woke up last night at 9.30 to get ready for work at 11, and I haven't slept since then. And light is fading a little bit, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to finish this tonight. Um, I took a lot of notes on this book especially. Also quite a few notes on the first one. Um, getting to the end, it's going to like pick up a little more and be exciting. The pacing is a little weird on book two. Like, the beginning was kind of a gut punch and some stuff happened and then nothing happens for a little while and then some more big stuff happens and then nothing happens until like the very end. And on the premise, um, the bottom part of the premise on the back, I know doesn't happen until like the last maybe two or three chapters. And usually the premise stuff happens pretty much before the first half of the book. So, I don't know. The, the second book is not my favorite. It's got second book syndrome. That's fine. And I'm sorry for the roaring in the background. That was a bridge, apparently. Say hello, Christopher. Good morning, it's about 10 a.m. We're a little bit of a ways away from the Mall of America, which we get to explore today on our last day in Minnesota. Um, I've done a lot of shopping, or some shopping. I am not doing so well on the low buy with my books, but I did finish the Book of Edda. I'm currently working on the Book of Flora, which I just started. There is even more sexual slavery and rape in the Book of Flora than I think in the other two. There is enough kind of discussion and detail for you to know what's going on, but not so much that I would call it graphic. So it's not the worst way to read it. Um, yeah, I'm noticing the three books are each told in kind of a different voice, which is good since they're all coming from three different characters. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying myself. The Book of Edda, like I said, wasn't my favorite. I liked the first one a little better, but I mean, that tends to happen with second books, so that's fine. Um, so, for a tiny little mini haul, because I have a problem and cannot resist anything, 
I got my own copy of Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. I loved this book. I thought it was hilarious. It's an amazing memoir. Um, yeah, so needed my own copy because apparently I need my own copy of everything that I love. And then I also picked up From Here to Eternity. I have not read this one by her yet, but I am looking forward to it because Smoke Gets in Your Eyes was so amazing. I officially call myself a deathling because I watch, I've watched most of her videos, if not all of them. Um, my arm's getting tired. And I, I really, I love it. She's, she's amazing. I would love to meet her someday and get my books autographed. And actually we are going to LA in August. <sighs> I don't know, but it's not nice to interrupt someone at their work just because you think they're amazing. <laughs> Uh, next up we have the psychopath test. I had actually seen this at a um, book sale at my library like six months ago, I think, and I was shopping with friends and so one of my friends ended up getting it. Um, we were going to trade at one point, that didn't really happen, but I wanted to get my uh, copy of psychopath test because it looked really, really interesting. Also, this cover is pretty great. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, it talks about psychology stuff, I'm into psychology, I work with some pretty crazy kids, so, yeah, we'll learn something new, um, <clears throat> because I have a problem, because I absolutely adore Dracula, I may or may not have gotten, like, my sixth copy of this book, but it was only $5.98. So, that is my justification for buying Dracula, as if I needed another copy. And lastly, those ones were all from Barnes & Noble at the mall for the little bit that we were there yesterday. This one I got at Excelsior Bay Books in Excelsior, Women Talking, and this sounded so amazing. Um, I will just read off the premise because I haven't looked at it that much to quite remember everything, but it sounds awesome. <clears throat> One evening, eight Mennonite women climb into a hayloft to conduct a secret meeting. For the past two years, each of these women, and more than a hundred other girls in their colony, has been repeatedly violated in the night by demons coming to punish them for their sins. Now that the women have learned they were in fact drugged and attacked by a group of men from their own community, they are determined to protect themselves and their daughters from future harm. While the men of the colony are off in the city, attempting to raise enough money to bail out the rapists and bring, these, the, bring them home, these women, all illiterate, without any knowledge of the world outside of their community and unable even to speak the language of the country they live in, have very little time to make a choice. Should they stay in the only world they've ever known, or should they dare to escape? Based on real events and told through the minutes of the women's all-female symposium, Towes' masterful novel uses wry, politically engaged humor to relate this tale of women claiming their own power to decide. How awesome does that sound? Also, I don't know if I have a dark taste in books in general, or if I just have a dark taste in books recently, but I'm seeming to pick the stuff that's going to give you a little bit of a gut punch. So, looking forward to this. Hopefully, I will have some footage to take in the mall. No promises. I don't really want to film people when they don't know they're being filmed because that's kind of weird, but I might have more footage to add to this or I might just do a bookish update before I upload this whole thing. We'll see. Have an excellent afternoon. Um, maybe don't visit Minnesota if you don't already live there because the bugs are insane. I have never seen bugs like there are in Minnesota. I don't know. Maybe it's just a summer thing. I don't know. But we visited family, had a good time, got to go to the Arboretum yesterday and almost get eaten alive a couple of times, but pretty nice vacation. Have a great afternoon.
everyone, we are on our way home, and I am not quite halfway through Women Talking. This is a really amazing book. Um, it really is a bunch of women talking. Uh, these, this group of Mennonite women, um, three generations in each of the two families that are talking, each of them have been raped. Um, one of the daughters is three years old and you get some details on what happened. It's not like graphic details, but it's, it's tough to read, but I'm loving this. They're just having a conversation of do we leave or do we stay and fight? And they're having philosophical discussions on whether or not they're animals, um, whether they should be treated like animals, what it means to leave, what it means to stay. It's, it's very good conversation. Um, anyways, <laughs> while sitting in this car, I've come up with an excellent idea for a future video. So when it comes to annotating and bending the corners on your books, I've seen uh, booktubers, you'll have a booktuber talking to the camera about why they annotate their books and why they bend their pages. And you will have another booktuber talking to the camera about why they don't do those things. I have never seen, at least I haven't come across yet, a video between two different people with very different opinions on that. And Christopher here um, has said some very terrible things about those of you who annotate your books, which includes myself. I don't do a ton of annotating and I always do it in pencil and I don't do it to most of my books, but every now and then there's just something that gets me. And he's looking at me and just despises me a little bit. Sweetie. Because you're wrong. I. It's, it's, it's not a matter of wrong and right. He also said terrible it is things. It's an issue of morality. <laughs> he also said terrible things about those of you who put stickers on your cars. I compromised and yeah, put really. magnets on mine. If you want to trash your own property, it's fine. <laughs> it's not my property. I'm going to cringe. <laughs> I love him anyways. So. I will see you all for probably like a wrap up in, what time are we getting home? Seven or eight hours? Yeah, I'm eight hours about. Ugh, long day in the car. <clears throat> I will see you all later. Check out Women Talking. It is super, super great. Oh, also, uh, I listened to bits and pieces of Jaws because he checked out Jaws. Um, the audiobook from the Libby app, and I also got the second book of the Themis Files, Themis Files, Themis Files, however you want to say that, I say Themis, um, Waking Gods. It's not, like, I'm not in love with the series, but I do think it's really interesting. I think it just takes me a while to warm up to it and get into that interview, uh, state of mind, but I, I do really like the audiobook. I think I'm going to stick to the audiobooks because I like the different voices. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're at. And look out, probably this month, for an amazing debate on the morality of annotating and page bending and putting stickers on your car. Makes you look like a careless idiot. Hello readers, I am finally back home after a very long vacation, and maybe it wasn't very long. It, so much time in the car, so much time with family, it starts to feel very, very long. But I am home, I am back at my desk, which is actually right next to my bookcase. I just thought I'd switch up the setting a little bit. Um, there is not that much to report reading-wise. Um, I finished Women Talking. It was just I am probably I'm going to try and come up with a separate review for this um I don't think it fits my standard uh setup for a fiction review so I might come up with something else I might stick with my usual setup I don't know but this is a super important book highly recommend it's not for everyone it is very dialogue heavy heavy very dialogue heavy very um much a discussion book. It's called Women Talking. It is about women talking, so it's not for anyone looking for something action-packed. 
but the decisions that they have to come to and the way they come to those decisions. It's, do we stay? Do we leave? Do we do nothing? What are the repercussions of these decisions? Um, what are our reasons behind the decisions? It's just really amazing. I loved it. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and come up with a review so I can talk more thoroughly about this book in the way that it deserves. Um, I'm reading, I'm listening to Waking God some more. I listened to it on the way through town on my multiple errand trips. And I have to listen to it again on the way to the vet because I totally forgot that the cat had an appointment the second we got back from vacation as if I didn't spend enough money already this weekend. Um, yeah, Waking Gods is going fine. It's getting a little more interesting. It's one of those books, I kind of forget about it, and then uh, now I'm listening to the sequel, um, for the Themis Files, and I'm getting interested in it again, but, and, like, they're good books. They're just not standout to me, and I don't know what it is. I'm enjoying myself. Um, they're just not the first thing on my mind, I guess. But I am reading the second book. I will very likely continue with the third, considering the way the second book is going. I will say it does not have the second book syndrome. Like, stuff is happening, and it's still really interesting, and there is a reason that the book has a second book, or that the series has a second book, the trilogy has a second book, so I'm sure there's a reason it has a third book as well. So it's nice to know that there's a reason that all of the books are together, instead of thinking, oh, all these books could be one. So I will, I will give the give the series that. Um, it's doing a very good job with the second book. The Book of Flora I have not read since the trip. I think I just kind of fell out of the dystopia feeling because I had all of these new books to get into. Um, yeah, like it's good. It's just not what I'm looking for right now at this moment. I will still be finishing it this month for sure. I just, I guess I need a little bit of a dystopia break. Um, as for that low buy that I said I was attempting this year, I have not given in to a lot of my whims, but I've also given in to a lot of my whims. This beautiful stack here just came in from Book Depository. Um, I do have one thing to say about Book Depository. It does not always send me the book that I click on cover-wise which is upsetting when you're trying to stick with series and collections. So I might try the other one that's not Book Depository. Book Outlet. That's what it's called. I might try them and see if they send me the book that I click on. The version of the book that I click on. Anyone else have trouble with this with Book Depository where it doesn't send you exactly the version that you thought you were getting? Um, but I'll do, I'll do another mini haul! I have problems, okay? And materialism in booktube is a whole other video. It's just a whole other video. It's gonna be a big discussion. But, mini book haul! Uh, Stephen King's Misery. I've been told by several people that I would really, really like this book. This isn't exactly the version I thought I was getting. I thought I was getting a regular paperback. I don't understand why people are selling these books that are so skinny. It's weird on a bookshelf. It's going to go farther in than the others and it's like taller than a mass paperback but not quite tall enough to be the regular paperback. I don't know where this is going on my Stephen King shelf and it's frustrating. But everyone has been telling me that this will be a Stephen King book that I really enjoy. Especially Chris because he's the Stephen King nut and he thinks that I'm going to love it. And I've, I've been getting very, very interested in it. There, I've, I've selected like the four to six Stephen King books that I would like to read this year. Um, I might not wait for the try a chapter tag for Stephen King for October. I might just do it now because you know what? I'm, I'm not a seasonal person. I don't read books according to what season it is. I just read books because it's what I feel like reading. I, I don't plan my reading very well because... I just, I, I am such a mood reader. That would also be another good video. Planning versus mood reading. I do try to plan around the themes of challenges that I'm getting involved in and readathons, but as for select books, I tend to read 
whatever I want to read in the moment. So I'm probably going to go ahead and do that try a chapter tag soon. I'm also hoping as soon as Chris gets home tonight, I want to shoot our discussion video on to annotate or not to annotate. I will come up with a better title, I hope. But I think it's going to be awesome to see a discussion on whether or not you should annotate in your books because I have not seen that on booktube yet. A discussion between two people with very, very different opinions. So I think that'll be fun. Anyways, Stephen King, Misery. That is my zipper, but I will allow you to play with it anyways. Amadeus is here. I missed my kitties. Um, this is actually the only nonfiction in my haul. I got The Uses of Enchantment, The Meaning and Importance of Fairy Tales. This looked super interesting. I don't even remember where I found it, but I would love to know about the meaning and importance of fairy tales. Fairy tales are important in pretty much everyone's lives. It's the stories you grow up hearing. It's the Disney that you get used to watching are all of these fairy tales. And this nonfiction looks really good. And I also noticed it has super, super teeny tiny writing. So that'll be interesting. But I, I like this. Analyzing the fairy tales and why they exist and why we need them. Like, I'm excited. Dude, what are you doing? If you're going to mess with me, you're going to get involved in my video. Come here. I gotcha. No. He thinks he can escape, but he cannot escape. He can never escape. Um, uh, towel head. So, I was, what, 13? Maybe? And I was at a hotel with my mom for dance, because I was in dance at the time. And she turns on the TV and we come across towel head. I didn't know what it was called at the time. I just remember watching this movie. That was terrifying. But she sat there quietly. She allowed us to play the movie. If and when I asked her to change the channel, she would change the channel. And when I asked her to go back to it, she would. Um, I feel that this is a movie that she felt would be good to open up conversation between us, which it did. Um, I searched for it for years. I tried to type in different Google searches and stuff because I didn't know the name of the movie. It's not a super well-known movie. And I finally found the movie and I found that it had a book. <sighs> Towelhead is really heavy, but I think it's going to be amazing discussion um, for my channel. She is... The main character is Arab American. She's sent to live with her dad in America. Um, there's a lot of racial discussion. There's a lot of discussion on tampons taking virginity, which for the record is completely untrue. Virginity is a construct. Probably not the discussion for this channel, but I have opinions. Anyways, um, there is rape of an underage girl. Um, she is coming into puberty during this whole time and doesn't know how to deal with any of this. And most of the adults around her don't know what to do with her, don't know how to act around her, don't have these discussions with her. It's probably going to get its own review just between the movie and the book. Um, it's going to be heavy, but it's going to be worth it, I think, and I cannot wait to discuss this book with you guys. I rarely hear about this movie. I've never heard about anyone reading the book. This is why I do backlist books. Backlist books are important. They get lost among the jumble of the new books, so I'm, I'm excited for this. I, I need to start spreading out my books so you can actually see them on my videos, but... I never remember to do that. So there's there's that. Um, and then I have the next two books on my journey with the Brontes. I, will, I just read, I've read Agnes Grey and I've read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I'm now moving on to Charlotte Bronte's lesser known works, uh, Valette and Shirley. If there's a certain one you think I should start with, please leave a comment below. Um, I don't know which one I'm going to read first, but it's going to be one of these, then I will read the other one, and then I will move on to Jane Eyre, and then I will finish off the Brontes with Wuthering Heights. I realize that Emily Bronte has poetry, I'm not a poetry person, um, so yeah. But let me know if I should read Valette or Shirley first. And lastly, more Daphne du Maurier. I have a lot of Daphne du Maurier on my shelves now. 
have like some older uh, hardback copies. I have um, three romantic novels of Cornwall, Rebecca, which I already own in another copy. Um, Frenchman's Creek and Jamaican, Jamaican or Jamaica? Jamaica in, in one hard cover. There's three in like this vintage hard cover and I have the scapegoat. Oddly enough, I did not have my cousin Rachel, so now I have my cousin Rachel. Um, I was going to wait to do a summer book haul to tell you about the books that I buy. Maybe I'll do a separate summer haul with these books included. I don't know. I like waiting on my haul so you know that I've actually read some of the books that I'm hauling. <laughs> um, but yeah, got this. So that is it for my second mini haul in this video. Clearly a low buy is not going to work for me right now. I've got so many vacations this summer. But books are books. What are you going to do? Anyways, this is going up on Wednesday. This will be my final bit in my vacation vlog. I hope you all have enjoyed the turtles and the fishies. And I finally got to go zip lining. It was so amazing. I thought there was going to be a drop in my stomach, like whenever you're on an airplane or something. There wasn't. It was just... I, I was going along like you would go on a boat or like you would go on a car or something. I just didn't have anything under me. There, there was no stomach drop, so it wasn't as freaky as you'd think it would be. Um, I loved it. Mall of America is super cool. Check out what they have before you go there so you know how you would like to spend the time that you have there because it is so much more than stores. <laughs> So yeah, have a beautiful, wonderful afternoon, my fellow readers, and I will see you on Sunday in my next video.